Hey everyone, this is the awesome TV show with Nikhil Taneja and I'm Nikhil Taneja uh, because it would have been weird if my name was the awesome TV show or maybe not actually. The show is called the awesome TV show not because it's an awesome TV show but because it's about awesome TV and because it's an awesome TV show. Yes, I'll be saying awesome a lot on this show. Every fortnight, I'll be talking about the best TV shows out there and I'll also be recommending the best shows that you're not watching so then we can talk about them. And there will be lists. Lots and lots and lots of lists. Since this is the first episode, we are obviously going to talk about, spoiler alert, Jon Snow is alive! <coughs> oh my god, did any of us see that coming? How did they manage to keep that under wraps for so long? I was completely taken aback. What about you? What? what? Yeah, I mean, the only Game of Thrones spoiler that you guys need to be concerned about right now is that Silicon Valley is a way better show at this moment. So of course, we're going to be talking about Game of Thrones a lot on this show, many times, again and again, all the time, obviously. But since this is the first episode and you love lists and I love lists and all of us love lists, the first episode is officially going to be a list. So here's presenting a list of the 15 best shows of 2016, full seasons. At number 15 is Vinyl. It's got the powerhouse duo of Martin Scorsese and Terence Winter behind it, and yet it underwhelms. The series is an ode to sex, drugs, and rock and roll of the 70s, and it should have been an outstanding show, but it's essentially the Wolf of Wall Street set in the music industry. It should have been number one on this list, so it underwhelms enough to not be even in the top 10. At the same time, come on, it's got Scorsese and Terence Winter, so it does make it to the list, but that's just about what it does. Watch it for the powerhouse performances of Bobby Cannavale and Ato Ascendo, who plays Lester Grimes on the show. They're outstanding actors. Also, Terence Winter on the show has actually been replaced as showrunner for season 2. So the show may get better or worse. At number 14, you've got Flaked. Between the two Netflix series about millennials, the mumblecore shows about love, life and growing up. One called Love, the other was Will Arnett's Flaked. Flaked makes it to this list because between all its casual comedy, it also talks about death and depression in a very, very mature way. So that's the series that you need to watch out for. Watch it for the fantastic performance of Will Arnett. He is Lego Batman. Do you need any other reason? Also, Mitch Hurwitz, the creator of Arrested Development, is the executive producer on this show. Do you need any more reason to watch it now? At number 13, we have Suits. Because in its fifth season, its fifth season, the show still continues to surprise, continues to evolve, and continues to kick all sorts of ass. It's possibly the most entertaining basic cable show out there, and I really cannot wait to find out what happens to Mike next season. Will he resurrect like Jon Snow? Your guess is as good as mine. Watch it for the incredible chemistry between the two leads, Gabriel Mack, who plays Harvey, and Patrick J. Adams, who plays Mike. Also, the show's been renewed for another season and 16 more episodes, so yay! At number 12, we have Agent Carter. We have not got a Captain Marvel movie yet, we have not got a Black Widow movie yet, we have got a Jessica Jones, but the Marvel superhero, who's not really a superhero, but is all kinds of super, is actually Agent Carter. Agent Peggy Carter from the Captain America movies has her own TV series, and she is such fun to watch. Yes, Supergirl is actually my guilty pleasure, but between all the series about girl power, it's Hayley Atwell's Agent Carter that I'll be recommending on this list. Watch it for the flesh and bones version of the very funny Jarvis. Also, this series is actually created by the screenwriters of the three Captain America films, as well as the next two Infinity War films, Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely. At number 11, we have Mad Dogs. This Amazon series came out of absolutely nowhere, but it was dark, twisted, and delicious fun. The show about four 40 plus guys who go to a vacation to Belize and get muddled up with the underworld there is so fun for all the wrong reasons. I never thought it could be such fun watching people get screwed. Watch it for the Belize setting and the curious guy in the cat mask. Also, Sean Ryan, the creator of The Shield, is the executive producer of this series, so you know you need to watch it. At number 10, we have Better Call Saul. Because there's something almost dark and poetic in watching Bob Odenkirk's Jimmy McGill's rise, or should I say fall, from being Jimmy to being Saul Goodman. Everyone's watching this Breaking Bad spin-off for the origin story of Saul Goodman, but to be honest, I'm watching it for the backstory of Mike. What a badass. 
Watch it for the origin story of Breaking Bad's Mike, Saul, and Tuco Salamanca this season. Also, Gus Fring is going to be back next season. You wouldn't have noticed, but the first word of the title of every episode of Better Call Saul add up to G U S F R I N G. At number nine is the Last Panthers because man, even Yoro is spending some crazy amount of money behind its original television programming. The series is a sprawling yet somehow intimate look at the lives of Balkan gangsters. The series is set across multiple countries in Europe and stars a A-list cast, including John Hurt, Samantha Morton, and the lead of A Prophet, Tahir Rahim. Watch it for the massive production scale and the emotional drama in the lives of gangsters. Also, the theme song has been composed by the legendary David Bowie. At number eight, we have House of Cards because go Claire Underwood. Finally, Robin Wright's Claire Underwood has got such a meaty role and such a great chance to come from behind the shadows to be fighting side by side and sometimes against Frances Underwood. Watch it to know how the US elections can be manipulated or should I say trumped from within. Also, did you see Claire Underwood break the fourth wall at the end of the series? Is this going to be another thing too? I can't wait to know. At number 7, we have Mozart in the Jungle. Technically, the series released on December 30th last year, but no one's watched it in January. So this is the comedy series of the year. If you did not know about it before it won a Golden Globe, and if you still don't know about it, it's a really funny series about the New York Symphony and stars Gail Garcia Bernal. Watch it for its fantastic ensemble cast. It's got Malcolm McDowell from A Clockwork Orange and breakout star Lola Kirkie. Also, the show is being created by Jason Schwartzman and Roman Capola, the son of Francis Ford Capola. At number six, we have Happy Valley, a small, intense, intimate crime series. Happy Valley is just as good in its season two as it was in its season one. A hidden gem, Happy Valley is so good because in its idyllic European setting, the crimes that are committed just seem much more gruesome. Watch it for the breakout performance of Brit star James Norton, who plays a murderer rapist. Also, the series features in a very crucial role, Downton Abbey. Abby's Sarah O'Brien. Remember her? At number five, we have the Night Manager. It's got Tom Hiddleston and Hugh Laurie in an adaptation of a John Le Carre novel. What more do you want in life? It's got a budget rivaling movies, and it's a thriller set across many countries and even continents. Also, the show's done so well in the UK that even though it was supposed to be a one-season miniseries, they're now considering a sequel. More Tom Hiddleston and Hugh Laurie for all of us. At number four, we have American Crime Story: The People vs. O.J. Simpson. Because how does Ryan Murphy do it every single time? Is the god of fiction content? The series is about the most talked about and controversial legal trials in the history of the United States of America: the murder of Nicole Brown, the wife of NFL superstar O.J. Simpson. And if you've seen the series, you know it's going to get a lot of enemies. Watch it for its outstanding ensemble cast. It's got John Travolta, it's got Sarah Paulson, it's called. Cuba Gooding Jr. and it's got David Schwimmer. Ross Geller is playing the father of the Kardashians, Robert Kardashian. Also, season two is already underway and will be dealing with the crimes of Hurricane Katrina. At number three is American Crime. Yes, there is another anthology series which is just as good and possibly even better than American Crime Story, and it's got a similar sounding name, American Crime. The series that deals with sensitive issues like campus sexual assaults and race tensions. This is arguably as good as network television has ever come to telling a story. Watch it for the powerhouse performances of Felicity Huffman, Timothy Hutton, and Regina King. Also, the series has been written and created by John Ridley, the Oscar award-winning screenwriter of Twelve Years a Slave. At number two, we have Billions, the best new drama of this year, stars Paul Giamatti and Damian Lewis. Yes, Paul Giamatti and Damian Lewis are starring in a series about the hedge fund world. And it is high stakes, and it's glamorous, and it's vicious. The series is almost a House of Cards meets Wall Street, so the tensions rise high AF. Watch it because Paul Giamatti and Damian Lewis are going face to face. Also, the series stars in crucial roles the star of Watchmen, Malin Ackerman, and the star of Sons of Anarchy, Maggie Smith. At number one, we've got Marvel's Daredevil because the Punisher's here. Elektra's joined in, and Daredevil suddenly elevated itself from a superhero series to an art form. Season one was really good, but not even good enough to make it into my top ten last year. But season two is so, so, so good. 
that I think this could be the Marvel series of our time. The action's incredible, the story's fantastic, Daredevil's not even boring this time. How is the Defenders ever going to match this? This is the series you really, really, really must watch this year. Watch it because John Banthal's The Punisher is the best anti-hero you'll watch this year and I don't think even the preacher is going to be able to match it. Also, audiences have loved The Punisher so much that he's getting his own series. So you've got Iron Fist, you've got Luke Cage, you've got Jessica Jones, you've got Daredevil, you've got The Defenders and you've got The Punisher. Marvel's takeover of television is complete. If you like this show, hate this show, if you think I'm an idiot and I shouldn't be doing this anymore, please feel free to comment below and troll me on at Taneja Mehu on Twitter because Taneja Mehu market it. If you love television as much as I do and you want me to do this over and over again, please hit like and please hit the button below and subscribe to Film Companion right now.